Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lab. Coming in with this week's Love and Marriage Huntsville. It is called Soft Open Hard Shade, and it was every bit of it. Before right. we get into this, I want to thank everyone who wished me a happy birthday on last week. Mm. Your kind words, your cash apps, everything meant so much to me. Mm. So here is what chapter 42 looks like, y'all. Yeah, and it looked good too, man. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to my baby. He took me out this weekend, surprised me with a little resort getaway. Yeah. Everything I told him not to do, he did. Of course. But I'm glad that he did do it. I did that plus. Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> All right, so coming up, uh, coming off the back of last week's birthday party, starting back up where Tisha and Mel having this conversation that, in my opinion, didn't need to be had. I mean, at the end of the day, they pretty much said, listen, we don't want to be friends. We don't want to be enemies. This thing has gone further than we wanted it to go. But before they even got there, there were some things that they still wanted to air out and iron out. So there was something that came up about, you know, of course, the mothers, the kids, mm -hmm. and the stuff that goes on on Twitter. And, of course, Tisha is offended by something that Mel is saying because Mel brought up to Tisha that, remember when we were all together, you stated that, well, I don't care what Marceau do as long as he comes back home to me or something mm -hmm. to that something nature. Like that. yeah. And Tisha was like, see, this the bullshit I'm talking about. <laughs> you lie, and you lie so good, you try to make everybody else believe it. That's not what I said. And I can bring Kimmy in here, and I'm Kimmy like, can do validate. That. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, she could collaborate the story. <laughs> and then they bring Kimmy in, and Kimmy is like, uh... I don't I, quite I, remember that. Yeah. Good move, Kimmy, because even if you did remember that, you know that they always put you in the middle, but then get mad when and you're you, in the middle. Exactly. And I was like, why would you do that? Like, Mel, at the point where Tisha said, let's bring in Kimmy, you should have been like, ah, uh -huh. let's just go ahead and iron this out ourselves. Right. But that's not what happened. So, like I said, they, they came to an agreement to agree to disagree. But before that, Tisha had let Mel know, listen, it's gone as far as my son MJ yeah. knows about what your husband said about his dad, about the 20 women. <laughs> and that affected my son. So I'm having to have conversations with my son about stuff that has gone too far with the adults. Now it's starting to affect the kids. And Mel was like, you know, let's just say that mothers and children oh, are okay. off limits. Unless... Unless the mama's Mother's Wanda. <laughs> yeah, because she was talking about Wanda. She said everything but Wanda now. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and I'm with her on that. Yeah, like, right, yeah. As much as Mel insert, I mean, um, Wanda inserts herself, you can get it too. But exactly. like I said, the kids are off limits. So, of, co of course, Mel was like, you know, in her confessional, she was like, yeah, you know, I agree. But what a what a wonderful time for you to bring up your son you know, trying to gain the sympathy and play victim to the bull that you've done too. Because Tisha does her bull too. Oh, Don't yeah. get it twisted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this season, they really have Tisha out here looking crazy. crazy. <laughs> like, I'm like, Tisha, I'm trying to rock with you, but you look messy as hell. Yeah. So, immediately after they decided to go ahead, you know, close out this meeting and go back out there to the children's party, we see Martell pull MJ to the side. Yeah. And told MJ, you know, oh. listen, <laughs> I know that you heard what I had to say about your father and the 20 women. And I said that to hurt your father. The adults got into a little kerfuffle. And it, won't and it wasn't true. Now, whether or not he said that to just save face with the child, we don't know. But he told MJ, you know, I'm sorry that you had to hear something like that. And um, MJ was like, yes, sir, you know. And they kind of just brushed over. Then I said, production, y'all bucked up. Yeah, how, how is find it, that out that quick? How is it that Tisha just told Mel she, yeah. that they had to have a conversation with MJ. Yeah. But as soon as they come up out the doors, Martell you, you see Martell apologizing yeah. to the son. Yeah, which All he right. should never done that by himself. That's what I said. Marceau should have been there when he was doing it. But of course, their beef, you know, he wasn't going to do that. But you don't ever, ever Address have you know, a serious kids. conversation with kids without their parents because that conversation can go many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, one, the kid, uh, the uh, Marceau's son could say, you said this and you can say, you said that. That's the truth. Yep. 
But this was a this was one of those um those moments where I believe this was all production. Oh yeah. Because yeah. real talk, I'm not even a mom. But when I have my nieces and nephews anywhere near me, my eyes never leave them. So you mean to tell me that Marceau and Tisha saw this whole grown man take their son to the side and having a serious conversation and y'all didn't They'd roll, roll up? up. Mm -hmm. Nah, that you you can't make me believe that this was a part of the production of this um, yeah, show. To the parents, then that we know in our life what a road black up. parents. Uh -huh. They're like, oh, uh, what you doing? Uh, what's going on over what here? What you talking can, to my can, child uh -huh. about? Can I help you? Cause we don't play them kind of games. <laughs> right now, we protect <laughs> the nest. And people snatching up kids these days, and I'll agree to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> snatching up kids and skit. <laughs> so, um, so after that was all blown over. There was, no, before that, Mel and, and and Martell are having a conversation because Martell is pretty much saying that he's holding down the business of Holt and Holt all by himself while Mel is out there doing adventures that ain't making no money. <laughs> That's really just depleting the funds that Holt and Holt brings in. Mm -hmm. So he's like, listen, if you're going to be out here doing this, that, and the third, then at least sit your tail down a little while, get this nanny situation and then you could go pretty much and do whatever yeah, it is that you put four five hours up here. Yeah, but I'm going to need you here at least a few days a week doing some work. This this is the bread and butter. This is what funds the empire. Mm -hmm. And she was like, but I got this going on and I got that. And then she turned around and said, you do realize nah, you asked me all this and I just had a baby. baby. I said, but you she, know you just hurt your... Yeah, because you're doing all that, so but you just had a baby. Yeah, you just hurt your argument. <laughs> but this is what I got to say about the whole thing. I think it's... I mean, it's all crystal clear. We already know they got... They either get a divorce or got a divorce. It don't yeah. matter. But... Uh, they ain't getting a divorce. Yeah. But anyway, her <laughs> freaking getting all these projects and stuff, she's securing her back. And I'm not mad. Yeah. So... Yeah. See, that's a woman with a plan. I'm not even mad at you, Mel. So, within that conversation, Martell lets um, Mel know, like, listen, we invited the Scots to the birthday party, and he didn't even speak to me. But I'm kind of glad he didn't speak to me, because I won't go speak back to him anyway. I was like, right. see, Come that's on, that see, female see, stuff that we talk right, about. Right, And Marceau knew what you were going to do, so he yep. wasn't even going to give you the satisfaction. But real talk, you invited them, I feel like you should have made them feel welcomed. welcomed yeah because y'all are in a very you strange always place. speak to the guests first mm -hmm. that's that's the way i was taught unless it's, it's new in these streets today where, where you just come to somebody's event or house and they're required to speak to you first I, I, well i mean when you're a, a decent human being you do <laughs> because you know that the host is everywhere like they their mind is in a million places so when you get there you usually try to make your make your way to them to speak but it's also the host's responsibility to, to make you sure. feel right. welcome mm -hmm. in their place but we talking about these people here <laughs> so within that conversation there was mel let martel know that destiny all these m's and then the d's now um, Destiny was getting ready to have a soft launch for her um, hair salon slash hair beauty salon. No. Yeah. Beauty. A beauty, a beauty supply store. Beauty supply store. You're going to be doing hair, hair in the back. back. Yeah. Yeah. And Martel was upset about it because he was like, no, he was upset for the fact that she said that the Scots were invited to this event. And he was like, well, let me get in touch with Destiny because why would she invite them? First of all, see that you being patty. Yeah. That's their event. They can invite they whoever, can invite the fuck whoever they the fuck want. They want. Them. And when you get there, you need to act like you have some good sense. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's just like if two friends fall out and then the other friends don't have nothing to do with you and the friend falling out. Now they can't come to the events because y'all got something going on. No, that's not fair. That's that that's that high school bull skit. It is. Yeah, when you get grown, yeah, you ain't got no time for that. So Kimmy and um, <coughs> Maurice are having a conversation because there, <laughs> there is some discrepancy of what may be expected and what reality is if Kiowa moves down there to Huntsville. Mm -hmm. Now, Kimmy is like, so if Kiowa lives here and she's in reaching distance, 
Why is it that y'all can't share time raising monster? And I was like, Kimmy, I love you, but it kind of sounded like you didn't want monster there no more. <laughs> I was like, that sounded all wrong, but I got what I, she I don't know what she meant. She she want a balance between Maurice and Kyle when she gets there. That's what she's trying to do. So it won't create no problems. That's what she was getting at. Yeah, but the way it came off. It's like, it's, okay, yeah. She yeah. Here, <laughs> you can have your son and we can just, you know, we can like, have. You like, you need. mama how you should run around here, butterball nigga, you know. I would like to you do that again. You gonna send Monster on over there with her for a little while. So you get that again. And Maurice was like, no, when she comes here, it's still going to be the same yeah, arrangement. Gonna... I have him through his teen years, and I'm going to raise him to be a man. I have a plan, and this is how it's going to be. I was like, oh, oh, well, all right. But I do agree with him being stable in one house because him, oh, him staying with them for Monday through Friday and then going with his mom on Saturdays and Sundays can get confusing after a while. But that's co-parenting. Real talk. But... Um, they could do that, but he know that I live with Maurice. And yeah, Kenny. there's no doubt that. Yeah, this, that, is, this home. is this is home. Yeah, and not you that, don't have two homes. Yeah, you just have one home and you visit your mom. Yeah. So the way it sounded, it was it was a little crazy, but <laughs> they blew over that. But I I love how Kimmy, even though her and Kyle doesn't have a really good relationship, she always advocates for her being a mom of mm -hmm. a son. Yeah. And she's like, Maurice, you're going to have to give some way here because you you have him now. But then she's going to be so close and it seems like you still don't want her to have any input on anything. And that's not fair. I am a mom of a son and I know how that feels. So he turns around and calls her, what do he call her, Kimawa? Kimawa. I was like, bruh. You about to get cut. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he laughed. And she I want to know don't. what she said when the cameras went off. She said, I don't think that's funny, and don't you ever do that again. And I said, I was with you on that one, Kimmy. I was like, cut him. Cut him. She and probably, then sew it back up. She probably put a knife out on her after the cameras went off. The blessing of it is she a nurse. She can sew him right on back up mm -hmm. and, and make it so that it don't kill or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next scene, we saw that Destiny popped up over there at Letitia and Marceau's office. They just got the office up and running and they're re and they're decorating and doing all that good stuff. So she pops up. Well, Letitia didn't know that Destiny had an appointment with Marceau. Mm -hmm. So it got really weird. weird. <laughs> really, really fast. So it didn't seem like a business meeting. <laughs> it really sounded like, oh, you just came over here to see my man, and I'm gonna sit in this chair. And I want to hear what y'all have to say to each other. And then eventually when Destiny was like, I'm over here because I want to, I want you to put your name in the hat to get the bid for the build out of my place. So Letitia, once she found out that information, when she heard that, she was like, oh, I'm out. Construction, that's not what I do. That's, 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 that's and that's Destiny my... is looking at her like, why the hell, hell else you think I'm? Over, over here. here. Like, what did you think was going on? So then Letitia goes and um gets Marceau some <laughs> espresso <laughs> and brings that over. And But she sits where she can still hear them talking business, right? And she was weirdly interjecting with some crazy questions. Like, what? Yeah, that's what he's talking about. You know, she has a 4,000 square feet. I was like, wow, go girl. Yeah, that's good. And she, I mean, she has a tight timeline. She need this, this. And Tisha was like, do you have a natural hairstylist that's going to be there? Because I need a natural hairstylist. I was like, first of all, stop. Yes. <laughs> that's something that you have a conversation with her about when y'all are together yeah. as females. Exactly. Right now, this is a business meeting. Don't yeah, nobody really. care about your natural hair. Don't nobody care about a silk press. Don't nobody care about a sewing. All we care about now is what's, it, what's the cost Yeah, money. what's the cost of that bid for destiny and how much change y'all going to make out the deal. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it was just weird. And I was like... Yeah. <laughs> and so, I love how Marceau was like, I have a lot of things going on. And that timeline that you're giving me is really not realistic. Yeah. But I'm going to put my name in the hat. And I was like, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Because if it goes wrong, it's freaking too close for comfort. But business is business and you got to make money. What? But he brought up a good point. He was like, because Tisha was like, if um, eventually it was like, maybe we shouldn't have 
took it on to be it because of them being friends with the Hawks. And he was like, Marceau was like, nah, this is business. And if I said, oh, I'm not going to give you a bid because you're friends with, with uh, the Hawks, that's going to create problems. But me giving them a bid cuts down on the problems because you can't say that I pick sides. So True. I did agree with that. So within before Destiny left, Marcel straight up asked her, said, how is Martel going to feel yeah. about you being over here asking me to put my name in, in the hat. hat? And she was like, he shouldn't feel no kind of way because at the end of the day, this is business. business. Yep. And I said, boom, be mature about it because that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's business. But So over at the soft lunch, we had the soft lunch for Destiny's um place is called Madani and I love the name yeah, like and as too. we learn by Leticia interjecting herself <laughs> it's a combination of I think it said her grandmother's name and her father's Father, name something like that or her mother's name somebody yeah. two names and I, I love it so <laughs> once again it got really weird really really fast but before that we have Kimmy and Kimmy is standing there and they're looking at the wigs on display and all of that. And you know, the inner sexy is talking and the different personalities yeah. are coming <laughs> out. And she was like, instead of him having 20 women's, I'm going to be 20 mm, different women's. Yeah, and there's another lady weeks. over there talking about something. Get that purple wig right there because <laughs> that one going to do something. I thought that was real cute. But um, Destiny pops in. And she's thanking everybody for being there and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> the talk about the build out started all over again. Yeah. LeBert, the one that brought that up this time, though. What the name? What's his name? LeBert? LeBert? So yeah. LeBert? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so LeBert is telling. Did LeBert. Somebody. LeBert or Destiny brought it up to Mar um, Maurice, these M's, God darn it, that, you know, we have a bit, whole build out back there. We have, this is um, phase one, but phase two, three, four, five is back there. And, you know, I talked to your brother about this and maybe he could, you know, do the work if the price is right. And Maurice he said, like, he can, he do, can do it. I but said, but he was saying it like, at first, it was, I was taking it like maybe he he don't do that kind of work. That's what but he sounded like. But he just gonna try on them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Destiny was looking like, huh? She said that doesn't make me feel any better. And then, then he cleaned up. He was like, no, nah, he real busy. He just real busy. I said, oh, I thought, oh yeah. <laughs> but that even sounded worse too. It was like either way you said it, you made your brother. Feel but Marceau like told them that he was busy, so that won't that won't no new news. So they already know that. That's like if somebody asks your brother, tell, tell your brother that, hey, Junior about to come over here and cut my hair. He can do that? <laughs> Me. Now, that part, I would have doubts. Yeah. Like, I would oh, no, have no, doubts. Because he's just busy. Yeah. That that still sounds like you standing people up. Kind of. Okay. Not, not in this case right here, though. In this case, they know. But I know it could turn into a big thing with this with this crowd right here, man. Quickly. Yeah. So Mel, Mel, Kimmy, and Tisha over there being cordial, doing what they do. And Destiny walks up and Mel says, you know what? When you drop that baby, I'm going to give you some of my body butter because that body butter got my skin back right and tight right after I had the baby. You at my, um, at my event and I gave some stuff out in the goodie bag. That wasn't in there, but I'll get you some of my body butter. So here's Letitia. I said, Tisha. Wrong time. Uh -huh. Um, I may not even need to be in this conversation because that's the event that I got escorted, escorted out, out of. I said, "Oh Jesus!" Like, I was like, "Yeah, you you get on mail about doing stuff like that, and, and then you, you turn around it. and do it." Yeah. So, and, and once again, Destiny is looking like, "What the hell is wrong <laughs> with this girl?" So eventually, she had an opportunity to have a conversation with Letitia all by herself and she comes to find out that Letitia didn't have any idea that she was stopping by the office to have a conversation with her husband about this whole construction project so Letitia was like I had no idea and she was like so is it that you just sit in and all on all of your husband's business meetings and Tisha was like no that's not what I do but you came to our office so I sat in the in the meeting I don't 
disagree with that, just shut up if that's not your that's yeah. not your lane. Yeah. In the conversation, just sit back and ear gaze and keep doing what you're doing. But it was you you just made it weird for no reason. And then Destiny was like, so you and your husband don't sync up calendars. Like you don't know when he has, you know, Meetings. anything going on. And she was like, no, no I don't, I don't have feel a need, the a need, need to do that. To do any of that. And she was like, oh, me and my husband, we sync up. Like, when I save, he save. Just like that. We know where each other are and what everybody's meetings are at all times. And Tisha was like, no, that's not... How we do it. How we do. And are you trying to insinuate something? Like, where are we going with this conversation? And I was like, so Tisha, now you're starting to look like you're insecure about something. So she goes over and has this conversation with her husband, Marcel, about it. And Marcel was like, listen... You know how it is when people first get married, they have all the answers to all of the questions and yep. all of they have a remedy to all things marriage. Yep. They whatever got married they last do, week. Whatever they do, let that work for them. Yep. Whatever we got going on, let it work for us. Don't get caught up in that. And then we start having to clash like this because you don't know what my calendar is. But you just said the secret to a successful marriage. What's that? It's finding out what works for your relationship. Absolutely. I can give you tips. I can give you ideas that you can plug in to see if it'll work. But it ain't guaranteed it's going to work. Mm-mm. Marriage, any relationship, is work. Indeed it is. Especially marriage. Absolutely. But it's worth it, though. So oh, don't yeah. get it twisted. It's worth it. In some relationships, it's worth it. Some. Of well, in my it. relationship, I'm talking, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Can't even pass on. But Got you over here blushing. Whatever. Look at it. Uh-huh. I'm tired, y'all. Y'all, <laughs> our weekend was so full. We had that's why we're late. But so then Letitia is up telling the crowd with well, the girls that hey, by the way, we're having a marriage panel discussion, and Kimmy and Maurice are gonna be a part of the panel. We would love for y'all to be. I ain't trying to be funny. <laughs> and I love all y'all. <laughs> But now one of y'all can tell nobody nothing right now about no marriage <laughs> at all. The only people that I would kind of listen to would be Kimmy and Maurice. But they're too new yeah. for me to even listen to. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I listen Happy to Happy anniversary. Today is their anniversary. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. Oh, sweet. Uh, Go on that honeymoon. Hey. hey that's my, my advice to y'all. Hey, Maurice. Take her on that honeymoon, bro. Uh, yeah. Even if it's what in you COVID. you on? <laughs> Hey, you done got your bar, you know, you done passed the bar and everything now, so, so you ain't got no excuse. Kimmy ready to get flewed out. Yep. You said what she, she ready to get flewed out. So, yeah, I was like, mm. And then Kimmy and Marisa are on the panel, which I can I'm not mad at, because it depends on how many other people are on the panel and what they bring to it. So if they come in from a newlyweds perspective, cool. You got somebody that's been in there for a little minute, and then you got some old heads. You know, then the panel will kind of work at a balance. Yeah, that's what that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so you got to have a variety hope on the panel. That that's there, but even Destiny yeah. was like, I, I don't know if I can take advice from any of them. The only thing I can take advice on is how to make a good espresso. I said, see, here we go with your shade, but I was here for it though. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much was the end of the episode. episode. That was it. It was just a bunch of shady fun. That's really what it all boiled down to, but. Yeah, so now we we're gonna create this competition with the Holtz and the Scots when it comes. To oh, it's oh, it's gonna Destiny be a kerfuffle now. It's gonna be a kerfuffle. I can tell you that it right now. It is about to get real interesting. Well, it's gonna be a kerfuffle if uh, Marceau them win the bid. Oh, but but before vice we go, versa. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a kerfuffle. So Destiny goes and she talks to Mel <laughs> about the weird interaction that she had with Letitia, and Mel was like. So it's just not me. Like, you, you're you speaking with her, and then things just get weird. And this is the one time that I have to agree. I agree with Mel. Yeah, this episode, yeah, definitely got, things it was got weird, weird. For no reason. I'm like, and but I just But like, I just hope that the writers of the show wasn't trying to insert stuff to make her look a certain way. Yeah. Because if, Or yeah. editing, because editing yeah. is a motherfucker. Yeah. 
So, yeah. And then she tells um, Destiny, she was like, girl, just watch your back, sis. Because I don't want you to be in a position like I am. One day they like you, one day they don't. And then one day they nice, and then she's acting weird on you. She's like, don't, don't trade places with what I've been through. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla. Get some rest like I am. Hey.